All right, in this video, I'm going to do an example of finding a partial fraction decomposition of a rational expression. And um, probably just do one in this, this video, because they can be a little long sometimes. So I'm going to start off here by finding the partial fraction decomposition of 3x minus 8 over x squared minus 4x minus 5. And again, when you have uh, one of these partial fraction decompositions, the first thing I always think about, well, there's a couple things. Uh, first off, the degree of the numerator always needs to be uh, strictly less degree than the de denominator, which we have here. The next thing I think about is, does the denominator, does it factor? And depending on how it factors, um, you know, that'll tell us uh, uh, how the decomposition breaks apart. Uh, so, yeah, notice the denominator does factor. Um, I believe it factors as we could use x minus 5 and x plus 1. Um, so the idea is once we have uh, things factored, notice we have two distinct linear factors. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to break this, this uh, rational function into two separate fractions. One denominator will be the x minus 5, and the other denominator will simply be the value x plus 1. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to figure out uh, constants a and b. We have to figure out two values for a and b so that when we, you know, if we basically, you know, we'll, we'll find our values for a and b. Suppose we did get common denominators by multiplying top and bottom by x plus 1, top and bottom by x minus 5. When we stick that back together, well, we want to get this original rational function back. So a few different ways to do these. Um, the way that I like to do it is... Whatever's on the denominator of my original rational function, I basically just multiply both sides of my equation by that. So all I'm doing is I'm going to get rid of the fractions. That's the basic idea. Okay, so if I multiply both sides by x minus 5 times x plus 1, on the left side, those would cancel out, and we would just be left with the 3x minus 8. And on the right side, if we were to distribute, because again, think about this as being sort of one big, uh, you know, one big factor. If we distribute it to the first term, the x minus 5s would cancel. We would be left with a times x plus 1 plus b. When we distribute all that stuff to our second term, the x plus 1s would cancel, and we would be left with the x minus 5. Now, at this point, um, there's a couple different things you could do. We could start doing, uh, we could multiply things out and do a process that's known as equating coefficients. You get a system of linear equations you have to solve. But when your factors are linear, there's actually a little shortcut we can do. So I'm going to use this little shortcut. And in some of the problems, we'll see you have to do this equating coefficients. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. The idea is, I look at my first factor, my first, my first term. We have a, a times x plus 1. And I look at this factor x plus 1, and I think, what value could I substitute in so that basically I would get rid of that first term? Well, to me, it looks like if we plug in x equals negative 1, we would get a times 0, and then that term would simply go away. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug in x equals negative 1. I have to do it on both sides, so I get 3 times negative 1 minus 8 equals a times, well, negative 1 plus 1. And then we'll have b times the quantity negative 1 minus 5. So I just took my equation. I plugged in negative 1 everywhere. Uh, if we do the arithmetic on the left, we'll get negative 3 minus 8, which is negative 11. We have a times 0. And then we have uh, b times negative 6. And if we divide both sides by negative 6, we'll get negative 11 over negative 6 or simply we'll get that b has value 11 over 6. So that's good. My whole goal, again, is to just try to figure out these constants, um, a and b in my original decomposition. So I know my b value at this point. I'm going to do the exact same process, <clears throat> except now, instead of getting rid of my term involving the, the a, I'm going to get rid of the term involving b. Well, to get rid of the term involving uh, b, I think I would have to plug in x equals positive 5. And if we do that, well, we'll get 3 times 5 minus 8 on the left side. We'll get a times 5 uh, plus 1 
plus b times, well, 5 minus 5. Uh, so on the left, we'll get 15 minus 8, which is 7. On the right, we have a times 6. We can write that as 6a. Notice the b, uh, the, the b term is gone. We've got b times 0. And then we can just divide both sides by 6. And now we've got our a value. So in conclusion, it says the partial fraction decomposition. If we break apart 3x minus 8 over x minus 5 times x plus 1, it says we're going to get a over x minus 5. Well, we just figured out a to be the value 7 6 plus b. And we figured out b a second ago. We said b was a positive 11 over 6. And b had the denominator of x plus 1. This would now be our partial fraction decomposition. You could find that if you end up uh, getting common denominators and writing this back as a single fraction, you'll get back the original rational expression that we started with. And again, that's the goal. We're trying to go from uh, kind of a condensed fraction, if you want to think about it that way, kind of a combined fraction, into its, its individual factors. So there's our partial fraction decomposition on the left.